Last time on Shadow Peace, Moria, Absalom and Sanji rushed over to Habu port to see who just entered Wano. Before they arrived, Momonosuke came to the situation first. Being mistaken for Kaido because of his full dragon form resulted in a world of pain for him. However, we quickly found out that the intruder is actually the captain of the new giant warrior pirates, Hyrudin. After seeing his shadow return and the burnt Avivre card, he instantly ordered his crew to set sail to Wano. At first the giant overwhelmed Absalom with his apologies and how sorry he felt about not being there to support Moria. After all, the outside world truly believes the Shadow Emperor is dead. The CP0 agent left the island after Moria's pull stopped. Everything after that is outside their current knowledge. Only a few groups know about Moria's situation and these groups are the Kid Pirates, the Hard Pirates, the Beast Pirates, the People of Wano, the Minx of Zo, Sanji, the Thrillerbark Pirates and now the Giant Warrior Pirates. Obviously Kid and Law could tell other people as well, but Kid doesn't want to share the spotlight of having defeated Young Girls with somebody else and Law, well he likes to keep some secrets. Obviously seeing Moria alive surprised the Elf of Natives. Don't just kill someone off like that, Hyrodine. Moria tells the giant his opinion. However, the confusion doesn't stop there. It is all a bit too much for the giant to wrap his head around. So a little explanation session later, he understands everything, seeing Moria in a new light, or rather a new shadow. Hisanashi is also mentioned in Elbefian mythology, even though they mainly focus on Nika himself. After all, a warrior god is the perfect fit for a nation like Elbaf. This scenario has made something very clear. Moria and others need to work out a plan together with Momonosuke for the future. Every member of the Fleet of Death knows that Moria headed towards Wano, and they all had a part of his Weaver card. So they as well will most likely come to the land of Samurai for revenge, or just to learn what happened from the citizen. Now, the Thrillerbark Pirates won't stay here for that much longer. So Momo and the Samurai are the people who have to explain the situation until every member of the fleet knows what actually happened. And once everybody of the fleet of death knows that Moria is still alive, it is only a matter of time until the world will learn the same, even if it is just by a slip of tongue of somebody of the fleet. Moria however fully intends to keep his current status a secret for as long as possible, truly becoming a shadow emperor. With this, Hyrodine is now up to date and every misunderstanding has been cleared up. That means Wano actually can have another day of peace and quiet. Together they spent the next three days traveling around the samurai country, visiting countless temples and learning more and more about the history of the Wano gods and what their powers are. All of this will help Maria. After all, understanding his abilities is another form of training. Mental training, you could say. This can boost his level quite a lot. Hyrodin and his crew spent their time helping the natives clearing up the country and also having practice fights with some of the samurai. In a late night discussion, they all agreed on sailing to Elbaf next. The giants invited all of the Thrillerbark members to their home country to enjoy the gigantic festival they are preparing at this very moment, not knowing that the kid pirates also were led to the fabled Elbaf by the log posts. Apparently, Elbaf and Wano had a close relationship in the far past. But these relations have stopped a long time ago. However, each island still has multiple eternal poses to get to the other. Wano being free again and being under the protection of the Thrillerbark pirates, who also have a connection with a group of giants, might just be the spark to reignite the ancient alliance. All in all, it is a calm time, perfect to relax and recover before the next trip. Meanwhile, on another island not that far away from Wano, what does the situation look? An old voice asked the people surrounding him. Smoke clouds have formed over the island. Rubble can be seen all around. Multiple ships are rushing away as fast as possible. A younger voice replies calmly. We lost three, but they technically also lost three. I told you this would happen sooner or later. Now we need to go into hiding or seek refuge with them. When saying them, the younger man acts with a told you so attitude. They have gone through a worst case scenario, so a few preparations had to be made. It hurts to leave all this behind and losing three of you is horrible, but we have to continue. Grab whatever you can carry and then we will lock up this place. An emotionful speech. This island and his partners truly meant a lot to him. 
but some people just had to mess everything up. Now a young female voice jumps in. We should have gotten rid of them a long time ago. There are more than enough other ways to achieve our goal. And old man? What are we supposed to do with him? Everybody present gathers around a small pot. Inside it is a young baby, together with a letter for whoever may find him. One button press and the pot gets shot into the water. Like a torpedo, it zooms away at high speed, until it is fully out of sight. Wherever the pot may go, you will be way safer there than continuing to stay with us. All of them nod silently in agreement. The silence continues for a moment, until the young woman starts talking again. And what shall we do with these corpses? Can't just let them lie around, right? Without hesitation, a small voice answers the conversation. The most logical thing is to throw them into the ocean. No one will be able to find them there. A morbid discussion ensues. But this group of people fought for their survival and managed to win, even if there were losses on their side as well. The woman and the small creature continue until the calm voice interrupts them. Why what I want to propose is by no means the good thing to do. We should have enough time to do that with these two corpses. Laughing wickedly, the woman knocks on the back of the tall man. Never would I have thought that you would come up with such an evil plan. Let's do it guys, I like that. She wants to lead the group, but everybody else turns their heads around to look at the old man, who just clears his throat before saying, <coughs> What are you waiting for? This is our last project on this island. We have a deadline of one day, a final all-nighter to leave a present behind for them. Having worked together for years, they are smooth in everything they do, only focus on what's ahead, not even being able to hear what the charming voice of another woman in the room has to say. A race against time and only four people to achieve the goal, everybody else present are just combatants. The world is shifting, dread, horror and sadness are being spread at a significant rate. Justice is nowhere to be seen, neither is joy. For joy shall only return once everything in the world, alive or dead, weeps for it. A new chapter is about to begin. Wano is safe, but the rest of the world isn't. Moria and his comrades still have a lot to do, starting with finding the final road Poneglyph. Will they encounter new people? Will they help more nations? Or will they continue on their own paths? There are a lot of unanswered questions, and we will go through all of them one by one. Just like Ola said that One Piece is entering his final saga, so is Shadow Piece. A lot of adventures are still waiting for us in the upcoming arcs. But let me ask you, what would you like to see in Shadow Piece before it ends? But that's all for me for today. All that's left to be said is stay happy, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay cultured. Pyro out.